from my house to yours. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. All the very, very best to you, wherever you are and however you are. Over the next few days and weeks and months, we're looking at the way John's gospel shows us that we are never alone, never alone. I have a book that just came out this week entitled, You Are Never Alone. And John's gospel uh, tries to convince us that, that God's presence is ever near. He's an ever-present source of encouragement and strength. And no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what you're facing, Jesus will meet you right where you are. But He doesn't want to leave you there. He doesn't want to leave you there. He wants to give you life, life. John's Gospel tells us that, that Jesus came to give life. He came from the Father, according to John 1 and verse 14, full of grace and truth, grace and truth. Got 10 minutes to discuss this powerful, divine hybrid of grace and truth. If not, please, no worries, no worries. Post your prayer needs, please, before you slip out so we'll know how to pray for you. But if you can stay around, wouldn't you agree with me that even though we're loved with both grace and truth, we tend to tilt to one or the other, either to grace or to truth. Some of us get stuck on truth, so much so that we beat ourselves up for all the times that we have violated God's truth. We just seem to keep a mental list of all the ways we failed in the past. Are you one of those? Could you do it all over again? You'd do things differently. You'd be a different person. You'd be more patient. You'd control your tongue. You'd finish what you started. You'd turn the other cheek rather than slapping his. You'd get married first. You wouldn't marry at all. You'd be honest. You'd resist the temptation. You'd run with a different crowd. You'd make different decisions, but you can't. You can't. And as many times as you tell yourself what's done is done, what you did can't be undone. And the truth hurts. I think that's part of what the Apostle Paul meant when, when he said that the wages of sin is death. It causes just this death within us. Not the wages of sin is a bad mood or the wages of sin is a hard day. But the wages of sin, well, something dies. It dreams die. Our future dies. It just, it just takes its toll. So can anything be done with our past? If the truth beats you up about your past, can anything be done? I remember when our oldest daughter, Jenna, was four years old. She came to me with a confession. She said, Daddy, I took a crayon and I drew on the wall. Don't kids amaze us with their honesty? Well, I sat down and I, I lifted her up into my lap and I, I tried to be wise. I said, is that a good thing to do? And she shook her head and said, no. I said, well, what does daddy do when you write on the wall? And she said, will you punish me? I said, what do you think daddy should do this time? And she looked at me with her mama's big brown eyes and she said, love? Don't we all long for that? Don't we long for a father who, even though our mistakes are written all over the wall, will love us, love us anyway? Don't we want a father who cares for us in spite of our failures, who does not keep a list of our wrongs? Friend, we do have that type of father. We do have that type of father. A father who is at his best when we're at our worst, a Father whose grace is strongest when our devotion is weakest. Contrary to what you may have been told, Jesus doesn't limit His recruiting to the stout-hearted and faithful. The beat up and the worn out are prime prospects in His book. And He's been known 
to climb into boats, climb into bars, climb into brothels, to tell them, to tell us, it's not too late to start over. I came with grace and truth. I'm sure glad that Jesus told me He came with grace. He told me this when I was a 20-year-old troublemaker on a downhill path. Though I had made a, a commitment to Christ as a, as a young man many years earlier, you wouldn't have known it, folks. You wouldn't have known it by the way I lived. I'd spent five years claiming to be God's son on Sunday mornings and buddying up with the devil on Saturday nights. I was a hypocrite. I was a hypocrite. I was, I was two-faced. I was too fast. I was self-centered. I was, I was out of control. When I finally grew weary of sitting in a pig slop, I got wind of, of God's grace. And I came to Jesus, and, and He welcomed me back. Now, please note, Jesus didn't accept my behavior. He didn't. He treated me with grace and truth. He didn't endorse my brawling. He didn't endorse my troublemaking. He wasn't keen on my, on my self-indulgence and my prejudice, my proclivity to, to boast, to manipulate, to exaggerate the chauvinistic attitude that I had. All that had to go. That had to go. Jesus didn't gloss over the self-centered max that I had manufactured. No, he didn't accept my sinful behavior, but he accepted me. He accepted me. He accepted his wayward child. He accepted what he could do with me, grace and truth. Now, he didn't tell me to, to clean up and then come back. He said, come on in. I'll clean you up. He treated me like, like I was his own. He came to me full of grace and truth. Not just grace, but truth. Not just truth, but grace. Grace and truth. Do you know this Jesus who treats us with grace and truth? Jesus told the adulterous woman, I do not condemn you. That was grace. But truth told her, now go and sin no more. That was truth. Grace and truth. Grace invited a swindler, a little pot-sized swindler by the name of Zacchaeus to lunch. Grace did that. But truth prompted him to sell half of his belongings and, and give to the poor. That was truth. Grace washed the feet of the disciples. But truth told them, now you do this. Do this as I have done to you. Grace invited Peter to climb out of the boat and walk on water but truth upbraided him, upbraided him for his lack of faith when he sunk like a stone. Grace invited the woman at the well to drink freely from everlasting water. But truth tactfully reminded her that she had gone through five husbands and was shacking up with a fellow who was a boyfriend and that needed to change. Grace and truth. Jesus was gracious enough to meet Nicodemus at night. What a story in John 3. But he was truthful enough to tell him, unless a person is born of the water and born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's the truth. That's the truth. Jesus shared truth. But he did so graciously. Jesus offered grace, but he always did so truthfully. Grace and truth. Acceptance. That's how Christ accepts us. Jesus found a way to accept the unaccepted and the unacceptable. Here's hoping he'll do the same with you and me. Friend, you just need to know that God loves you so much. He loves you so much. Lean into His grace today. Be responsive to His truth today. Remember, most of all, you belong to Him. And you're stronger than you think because, well, God is nearer than you know. You are never, ever alone.